Greetings class. I'm here to go over the Gene Anion essay with you guys. Um, first of all, this essay is written in the 1980s. And what Jean Anion did was she did a study of four different schools. She did a study of lower class schools, middle class schools. She did a study of um, not quite upper class schools, but middle upper class schools and the affluent schools, like one percent school. Um, and what she did was she studied fifth grade, fifth grade. And essentially, some people might say this essay is dated because it's from 1980s an older essay. However, um, I've been teaching this essay for a while and I find the things that are written in this essay are still here. They, they're, they're still reoccurring issues. They haven't changed. And I also like this essay because it ties in with Horace Mann, especially what he was saying that education is an equalizer. And I want to look at that. Specifically, I want to look at how English was taught at the four different schools. Um, in the first school, In the first school, the teacher, um, I'm reading page four, where it says, um, the second paragraph says, in both working class schools, work in language arts, and mechanics of punctuation, comments, periods, question marks, exclamation points, um, capitalization, the four kinds of sentences. One teacher explained to me, simple punctuation is all they'll ever use. And I, can, I cannot imagine being a, a, a parent and going to a parent-teacher conference and, and the teacher is saying, well, your kid is learning these things, but we're not, we're not going to teach him semicolons or we're not going to teach her colons or dashes or long dashes because they're never going to use that in their life. Um, they're never going to use more complex sentences. I think that would be depressing. And as a parent, I would be really, really angry and say, why aren't you pushing my child? Why aren't you teaching them more? Why are you trying to limit them? But this teacher is limiting them. And I, I think that's a bit it's depressing. Um, they do have a creative writing assignment, but that's depressing too, where what they do is they write an autobiography and it is comprised of where you were born, what is your favorite animal, all about me. So it's just basic questions. Um, there's not a lot there. Um, and that's about as creative as they get. And if you ask me, I teach creative writing, that's not creative at all. Also, if you look towards the end of this section, the, the teachers are mean. Um, there's no clocks on the wall. The students have no time, no idea what time it is. Um, um, the teachers are derogatory. They're saying things like, shut up, shut your mouth, spit out your gum. Terrible things to tell, tell the children, but the teachers are very mean, um, dogmatic here, cruel. And this isn't my belief. However, if you're looking at what Gene Onion is trying to say, is, and it goes back to John Taylor Gatto. John Taylor Gatto was saying that the school you go to conforms you to what you're gonna do in the future. And if you ask most people what these kids are gonna be doing in the future, they might be doing manual construction, retail, they're gonna be doing basic jobs, following instructions, things like that. Now you may not believe that, and I, I question that as well, but essentially that's what she's trying to say. In the next school, she talks about the middle class school. And here, um, they do learn a little bit more. They learn more simple grammar, things like that. They learn more complex sentences. The teachers are a little bit nicer, um, but they focus on memorization. Um, they also have to write letters. They, they write letters. I'm reading page page six near the bottom. Um, they'll, they'll use simple grammar for everyday life. They'll learn how to speak properly, write business letters, thank you letters. And I remember being in fifth grade and writing letters and I didn't understand why. And what Jean Anion is trying to say is that the kids from these schools are gonna be more administrators. They're gonna be, sec they're gonna be secretaries and things like that. They're gonna be doing paperwork. So they will be a step up. And then the other school it's called the Affluent Professional School. In my opinion, this is the most creative class, creative school. Um, for example, some of the classes intermix, like um, I'm reading, I'm summarizing page nine, where it says um, near the bottom that the students basically, they, they create their own hieroglyphics. They create their own language. And then they write a play. And then they go home and their parents film the play. And then later during cafeteria, um, their play is performed. Does that make sense? So it's very, very creative. It's, it's the most creative school out of all the four. 
Um, one teacher even says, um, there's no given place to put a quest or comma. Sometimes you put a comma wherever you feel like it, which is fascinating as an English teacher as well. But it's more hands off and it's very, very creative. And if, if you're following this paradigm, what Jean Anion's trying to present, she's trying to say that um, these kids are going to be the think tank. They're going to be in advertising. They're going to be journalists. Um, they're going to be coming up with ideas for the company. Does that make sense? And then the last school is the executive elite school. And the way they teach English is they have to master it. And I'm reading page um, 12. They have to master it. They have to know um, semicolons, colons. They have to know different parts of speech, participles, conjunctions, interjections. Not only do they have to know them, they have to be able to teach them. So that would be like me coming to class one day and saying, you know what, you in the front row, you're going to teach us how to use semicolons. Right now, get up. You have to explain this. So they have to know grammar. In the first school, they have to... Um, they're not even going to learn basic. They're just going to learn basic grammar. Nothing that they'll ever... They're, they're not going to learn anything they'll use later on. In this school, they're going to learn everything. And they're going to learn it to the point where they master it. They know it inside and out. Another thing they do in English class is they, they write a story. They're supposed to write a scary story. But it's not graded on, um, did your did your story scare me as your teacher? No, they're not graded on that. They're graded on, did you have a setting? Did you have rising action? Did you have a plot? Did you have a climax? Did you have... Res resolution so so they're still graded on structure which, which is interesting so they have to master it they have to be able to teach it they have to understand the deeper complexities of stories um this school has the most lenient teachers um in one school in one class the kids are misbehaving and rather than the teacher reprimanding them like in the first school where they say shut up or shut your mouth the teacher basically says you are the driver of your own car of your own vehicle and you have to understand how your actions um, are detrimental to other people. That's all they say. They, they don't reprimand them. They just say, hey, you need to think about other people. <laughs> I could imagine going to school like that as a kid. I had mean teachers. But essentially, these teachers are very flexible, very kind, very giving. Um, in fact, um, they, they have to be available for the students at all times. So if the teacher is on their lunch break, the kid can come up and say, hey, I need help with this math assignment. The teacher has to help them. In fact, um, the students have the teacher's numbers. So it's Sunday night, teacher is relaxing in bed and a student calls and says, hey, I need you to go over um, semicolons again with me. And the teacher has to respond. Now, be, be aware, these, these teachers are probably getting paid very, very well. This is an executive elite school. Probably a very small percentage of people going to this type of school. But um, if you look at it from this perspective, what Jean Anion is trying to present here is that these kids are going to be the CEOs. They're going to be leading the company, and they're groomed from a very young age how to lead. Now... It's a very complicated essay. It's very philosophical, it's deep. And it talks a lot about inequality, especially among class. And if you dig deep into it, you can also see an inequality among race and gender as well. That would be more assumed. It's not written, but um, we do know that a lot of um, ethnic neighborhoods have, have poor schools. And what I'm getting at is this horseman in the very first essay you read he said that education is an equalizer and personally i like to believe that i'm an educator i like to believe that that if you go to school you can get an education you can make more money but this essay is complicating that essay because she's saying that it's not about going to school it's about where you go to school and i like to believe that a, a child from that inner city school if they work hard they do everything right and they're just naturally gifted and naturally smart they could be a ceo of a company we have examples of people who do that but i do say the odds are against them and the reason why is because these kids from this last school the executive elite school they've been groomed from for, for this position their entire life so what chance does a child from the first school have when they're going to be competing against these kids who have been doing this having to teach your classes and master these things from from the day they're born it's not a pl fair playing field and i think she represents that very very well i think that if you're if you want to talk about inequality i think that's a great topic it is a broad topic so i i wouldn't do comparison contrast for an essay 
However, if you want to talk about how inner city schools might not have good libraries, school libraries, that's a great topic. If you might say they have outdated textbooks or something like that, those are great, great topics. And I, I, those would work really, really well. So I enjoy this essay. I, I like how it meshes with John Taylor Gatto. I like how it meshes with Horace Mann. And from my own perspective, looking at my own childhood education, I think a lot of us can look at this, read this essay and say, I got robbed. What happened? It wasn't fair. And um, I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you guys have any questions, just send me an email. Thanks for listening.